I had my first uh, piece of ass when I was um, in college. Uh, I wanted to get into all that in high school, but see, I'm from Georgia. I'm from Fairburn, Georgia. Uh, and, you know, there were so many guys knocking chicks up in high school that it scared me, right? Because uh, I thought, man, if I did that, I, I might get stuck, you know. I and, and I desperately wanted to get out of Georgia. I couldn't stand it there. It was not my cup of tea. So uh, I put it off as long as I could. Of course, I grew up in the 80s and the 90s, and the only thing you heard on the news uh, in the 80s was AIDS and cold. the Russians are going to kill us all. And in the 90s, all you heard about was OJ, Clinton, AIDS, anthrax, and the Soviet Union fell. So, uh, you know, we didn't hear so much about nuclear war anymore, but... Um, anyway, I was just terrified, but once it was introduced to me in college, it came in the form of a reprobate 52-year-old alcoholic professor, I'm not going to mention her name, but, uh, she's an old lady now, living in the mountains of North Carolina, North Kakalaki. So, uh, yeah, that started the whole ball rolling right there, and, uh, I spent the next... 20 years of my life in bed with everything that walked, and, uh, you know, what was I doing? I guess I was, uh, I don't know, what was I doing? I guess I was just trying to get, get some needs met, uh, you know, uh, the whole thing was a mess, really, but, uh, but I'm all straightened out now, and, um, and I shut the whole thing down when I got clean and sober because I felt like I hadn't really left any stone left unturned, you know what I mean? I I explored I, whatever it was I needed to find out about the, the game, uh, I found out. I mean, the, it's just a rabbit hole that goes down, down, down. And like any other addiction, it ends in the same way, jails, institutions, and death. And... Uh, Oh. Funny thing is, man, when I uh, when I was a when I was in high school, I had no interest in using dope or alcohol. I must have heard uh, about people smoking pot, but I didn't really know what it was. And then later in life, I find out that people have been smoking pot at my house my whole life. My, my folks were heavy, and my stepmother and my dad were heavy into drugs. My dad liked cocaine and marijuana, and you never wanted to be around him when he was drunk. He was not a good drunk. And uh, the stepmother was high on methamphetamine pills and purchasing the pills from her sister. And when you added it all up, and you realize that drugs were being transacted at the house and used at the house, that meant that I was in a dope house. I grew up in a dope house. It didn't look like a dope house because it had a swimming pool. But uh, the behavior made it so. And, um, you know, just going through, watching the whole thing disintegrate in the late 90s, you know, that's the, you know, uh, my dad married, got divorced, married, got divorced, then they got back together and they split up again. The third time, that third separation, I didn't really get involved emotionally. I was done at that point. I couldn't, I didn't care. That stepmother figured, she was just a dope fiend, man. You know, she's all right. You know, it, just one of those fair weather kind of chicks that, you know. As long as she's feeling good and she's in the mood, you know, then she could be delightful. But I tell you what, man, when she turned on you, when she became uh, hateful, it was very unsavory. So, and then later in life you start processing all this stuff and you, uh, you might find yourself resentful or feeling lots of self-pity, and then they come along and tell you that you can't have self-pity. Uh, 
I see self-pity as something like Bermuda or the Bahamas. It's a great place to visit, but you just don't want to live there, you know. Unless you grew up there. If you grew up there, that's one thing. But what about love, Ryan? What about relationships? Well, I wasn't really good at relationships too much. Uh, I didn't choose well. Or maybe I would fall for some person because of the way they were nice to me or loved me or something. And then... And then there may have been some issues, some irreconcilable issues that I'm not going to go into now. Because I don't want to get flagged. I don't know. But, uh, you know, it's hard, you know, uh, when you're, you want love, you want sex. You want good love, you want good sex. And maybe the love's better than the sex. If the love is better than the sex, you might find yourself looking elsewhere to get your needs met. I certainly did. Of course, I was always using during all my relationships. I wasn't clean, you know, I wasn't sober. But I am now. Uh, and it's just a, it, it's a transformation of consciousness, man. You know, you, 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 you're thinking one way and then, you know, you have a spiritual awakening and you're to be thinking another way. I've read my Joseph Campbell and, um, uh, I don't know why I make these goddamn videos. No one's ever watching them anyway. I mean, why would you when the price is right is on? The happiest people on earth are on the price is right. I wonder if China, Russia, or Iran has their version of the price is right. People screaming and, you know, ecstatic with happiness. And, well, maybe they do. Probably not in Afghanistan, huh? Whew. But, uh, yeah, forgive me for being cynical. It's just, you know, I've been through too much, you know. Uh, you, go, you, go, you go through enough, uh, enough, and, I don't know. But then you get around people who don't have those problems, and you're like, hey, why are they, why are they so well adjusted? I remember thinking that about it. This girlfriend that I have. She's so well adjusted. I got a number to go around. Okay. Yeah. All right. It's my roommate. So. What about fame, Ryan? Oh, fame. Well, you know, if you find yourself. What's the thing about fame? It's a misinterpretation. You think that if you're visible, that you're loved, and that you're going to get the love that your parents never gave you. This is the mistake that Marilyn Monroe made. Poor thing. I think she would have been a really cool person to know. It's just, how do you live a normal life? She was strung out on dope, man. That, she, I mean, she was heavy into the fucking pills and alcohol. A terrible mix. I mean, that's that's what killed Brian Epstein. A lot of motherfuckers that aren't famous died of that mix. Pills and alcohol. It's all a trap. So, anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm tired of hearing my own voice. And uh, I'm going to continue cooking this food. And I hope you learned something today. Not from me, of course, but, you know, from uh, public television or YouTube or something.